Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah on this channel. I post a lot of anti MLM content pertaining to the pitfalls of the multi-level marketing industry, why you should not get involved with it, as well as a lot of discussion about the behaviors that go on within this industry and kind of what's required of you if you want to be quote unquote successful at it. So as always at the beginning of every video, I link a playlist here and it's always in the description box below too. This is my big anti MLM playlist with every video I I've ever created on that topic. I believe that this is the 141st video on that playlist, so very bingeable. And if this content does interest you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, liking this video, leaving a comment, all of those things really help to support the channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. Today's video, I'm bringing you another MLM Zoom call. This is from the MLM company Mon8. Occasionally, I'm given access to these Zoom calls. These are calls hosted typically by people towards the top of the company, the leaders of these big teams in these companies, and they are presenting to their downline members on a variety of different topics. So for this specific call, here's some background knowledge that you'll need up front. The first thing is that this is from the company Monate. The second thing is that it is a 45 minute Zoom call, so get comfy, there's a lot to cover here. The third thing is that it's hosted by somebody who is at the top rank of this company. However, with a mass exodus of people quitting Monate and leaving the company, I can't say for sure if this person still remains at that top rank. People leaving her team may or may not have impacted that status in recent months, but we do know that the highest that she's ever made it in the company is the top rank called Senior Executive Director. According to the Monet Income Disclosure Statement, only 0.01% of people ever make it to this level, and the median annual income of this rank is just over a million dollars. So just to give you some perspective as to where she's coming from as the speaker and the host of this call, she's made it to the top, her team team is gigantic. She has so many people underneath her in her downline, and therefore she makes a crazy amount of money from Monate every year. You could consider her to be one of the success stories, if you want to call it that. I personally wouldn't consider building your entire income and lifestyle off the backs of other people to be a success, but in MLM terms, she's at the top. She's where everyone strives to be. Additionally, there are over 250 people on this call, so lots of people in attendance. These are all people that are on her team in her downline. Surely not every single person on her team is in attendance, but it gives us some kind of reference how big your team must have to be if you wanna be in the top ranks of this company. This person quite literally has hundreds, if not thousands of people under them. Another thing worth noting is that this is a private password protected call that I was given access to. I was sent the link and the password to it. But the assumption is here that she is talking to people that are already on her team. These are people that have already signed up for the Monet business opportunity. So we would call this a team call, not an opportunity call. An opportunity call would be where someone is offering the link to pretty much anyone who wants to come. And the purpose of that kind of call is to pitch the opportunity, to pitch the business in hopes that the people in attendance, the people that are listening will be convinced to sign up for it. So this is not an opportunity call where she's trying to convince people to join. This is a private team call where she's speaking directly to the people who have already signed up and they're already in her downline. Lastly, the point of this Zoom call is to discuss social media strategy, where she's giving her teammates different tips and tricks about how to present themselves on social media and the kinds of things that you should be posting as a Monate representative to entice people to become interested in the opportunity and to therefore join your team. Okay, that's all the background knowledge you should need about what the company is, who this person is, what her purpose is in hosting this call. So with that, let's get into it. Let's see what she has to say. And I'll be pausing it periodically to offer in my own commentary as well. Okay. So that's my cue. I guess we will get started. I have the waiting room open. So anyone can pop in now. I don't have to be distracted by that. Um, yay. I'm so excited, you guys. I am really, really, really pumped up about this call. And, you know, Anytime I train, I'm just living on a prayer. Okay. Like I'm not a very prepared person. Um, I don't usually have notes. I've been trying to be a little bit better lately. Um, but I don't have notes tonight because I know exactly what I want to say to you guys, what I want to share. God has put the most amazing message on my heart. And, um, it's taken me back. Like 
from, you know, when I started in this business. And that's why I just like, I didn't want to set this like hype vibe because that's not what tonight's about. Tonight is about really, really diving deep into why you're doing this. Like, why are you here? Where do you want this business to take you? And I think that um, nine times out of 10, when someone is not successful in this business, it's because they have not attached their need for it to, to the business yet. They, they don't even know why they need it. Or they have a wall. There's this invisible wall there where they, they can't do that because there's so many breakthroughs that they have to get through to be able to get to that point. And I'm telling you guys right now, and I hope that by the end of this call, my prayer is that all of you guys have that breakthrough moment where you realize that you have every single thing that someone is praying for and needs in their life. You have it in your hands, okay? I don't know of anybody who really needs or is praying for an MLM business opportunity, okay? She's trying to make it seem like giving someone the opportunity of Monate is like a gift that you quote, hold in your hands and that you can bestow upon people to help them improve and change their lives. But statistically, that's not what happens for most people when they join this company. In fact, 93% of people who join Monate are stuck at that very bottom rank. The median annual earnings for this bottom rank is $21. I don't know about you, but having an extra $21 for an entire year isn't exactly life-changing money, especially when you consider that you had to spend at least $200 to get started in the first place. You spend $200 to join, you get $21 back. That's called debt. <laughs> There's a good chance that when you're gifting people the opportunity of Mon 8, you are gifting them debt. That's not a good gift. Nobody wants that. But how they try to make it seem is that you are gifting people the opportunity to have have the life of their dreams. Sure, most people in the company make next to nothing, but there is the opportunity to make more than that. And I think this really is the basis for this entire call, which is the idea that you as a Monate representative hold this gift in your hands and it is your job to go out there and spread the good word. Go out there, show what it's done for you, share your testimony in the hopes that people will see it and they'll be intrigued. They go, hey, I want what this person has. And if they're telling me that this this company and this business opportunity is what's provided them with those things, I want in on it too. And that is a huge, huge recruitment tactic that is necessary for these businesses to survive. So when I started in this business, for those of you guys who don't know a lot about my story, I'm just going to do like a small flashback. Um, I started in my business. I had from the outside really, truly what looked like the dream job. I really couldn't get any higher in the place of my, my workspace that I was, I had grown an insane celebrity clientele. I was booked. I mean, literally four to six months out pretty much at all times in my business. And I was literally drowning. You guys, I was drowning emotionally. I was drowning mentally. My marriage was literally on the verge of divorce. Like so much that like divorce was filed, not like, oh, we're having a rocky time. Like we were literally getting a divorce. Um, I felt the most heavy amount of guilt. And I had come from prior to that five years of building that business. And, and really when I started building that business, you guys, all I wanted was to make enough money to not have to rely on my food stamps or my state benefits. I didn't want that. Like I was the person that literally had to be on it because I didn't have anything else. My husband worked from the time we've been together. My husband has worked his ass off. Like, and when I say worked his ass off, I don't know if you're from California or you understand, but he would drive from literally, you know, Canyon Lake where we lived to West Hollywood every day. Okay. It's, it's like two and a half, three hours each way in traffic. So it was really, really, really rough. Um, we had kind of reached a place where it was like, I felt like I tried everything. Like I was just like, I tried everything. And it's like, you know, when you just feel like you're on a treadmill that is just going faster and faster and faster. And it's like, you finally feel like you can walk and it's like, nope, it ain't time to walk. And then like the speed just keeps going. 
So I would finally be able to get to this place where it's like, okay, I don't have to rely on my food stamps or my WIC or whatever, you know, benefits I had at that time. And now I can actually afford, you know, my own stuff. Well, then I went into this space of, okay, yay, we're building our dream life. Everything's amazing. I have this super successful business. I have celebrity clients. I'm literally filming with the housewives. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing all these things. And I've literally lost everything that I, that I wanted that business for. Everything that I wanted that business for was down the drain. Like my marriage, me as the mom, the, the work from home mom, what a joke what a freaking joke, right? Like work from home, mom, dear God, I was legitimately in my garage 10 to 12 hours a day. If I was not out installing or delivering, um, the first couple of years were probably the best years looking back now, because I wasn't so busy. I wasn't so booked out. I had my son with me at every single install for two years. My son came with me to every single install that I had. And you guys, I was doing anywhere from, you know, two, two to four, or sorry, four to six installs a month at that time where it was like, I would build and then I would go install at the end of the week and so on. So at that time I look back and I'm like, gosh, that was really when I was the happiest. But then when I reached the place that I wanted to go, and this is why I want to, I want to share this with you guys. And I want you to like, write this down. Okay. The person who enjoys walking will go further than the person who enjoys or wants the destination. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. What we are seeing here is what I always call the classic rags to riches sob story that we see in every single MLM Zoom call to ever exist. If we had an MLM Zoom call bingo card, this would be the free space in the middle because it is guaranteed to be there. And the purpose of giving this kind of origin story is to paint the picture of how awful your life was before the MLM and how wonderful your life is now as a result of being in the MLM. Some of the things in her before story is being on the edge of divorce, going from being on government assistance in the beginning to now being stretched way too thin when her business kind of blew up, which by the way, let me clarify this here. She used to have her own furniture business where she would build and design custom furniture pieces, like a legitimate small business. And I've seen some of her work. It's incredible. She is very, very talented. I can see why she had celebrity clients, but we'll come back to that in a minute. The point is that she's trying to create this image in the listener's mind that her life sucked beforehand. And now she's living the life of her dreams thanks to the Monet business opportunity. This is classic MLM Zoom call content. Every person hosting an MLM Zoom call will take a moment to share their story. And that's because they want the listeners to strive for whatever the speaker has. Typically the speaker or the host of these calls, like I already mentioned, is somebody at the top of the company or is the leader of this team. And they are sitting at a position within the company compensation plan that everyone else wants to get to. So they'll always make time at the beginning of their Zoom calls to share their story as a way to try and create this common ground and sense of relatability. Like, look at me, I'm at the top now, but I was once a lowly and disheveled person like you. And through this business, now I have everything I ever wanted and you can too. And there's one thing that's jumping out at me regarding her specific story. She's making it seem like she was almost too successful with the furniture business. Like it was stretching her too thin. She wasn't happy. It was growing too fast. She used this analogy of being on a treadmill that's just continually speeding up and you feel like you can't get off the treadmill. She's too busy. She has too many clients. All of which I can understand. I can relate to her on the level of being self-employed and taking on way too much, way too quickly and kind of burning yourself out. I've definitely been there. When I started doing YouTube full time over a year ago, I was putting out four videos a week, you guys. Four videos a week. And that was fantastic for my channel. But I quickly learned that it was not fantastic for my work-life balance, for my sense of fulfillment, for the amount of time that I had for myself during the week, and that I could not continue at that pace if I wanted to be in this for the long term. So I cut down to three videos a week. Even that felt like a little bit too much. So I cut down to two videos a week, but I made the videos a little bit longer. And that felt like the perfect balance. And that's what I've been doing for like six months at this point. Two videos a week, that is the sweet spot 
that I have found where I can still maintain my progress towards my goals with my channel, but I'm also doing it in this sustainably paced way. And my point in bringing up that comparison is because if she's running a furniture business where she is the boss, she has the time freedom, she has the ability to set her own schedule and to take on as many clients as she wants to, she's in complete control of all of those things. Ironically, she had all of those benefits that MLM business opportunities claim to provide, the time freedom, the financial freedom, the being your own boss and being in control of yourself kind of thing. So my question is, if you have all this flexibility and control over your legitimate small furniture business, why not just scale it back a little bit? Why not just take on less clients? Why did you feel like you had to quit altogether to pursue something completely different, like a shampoo MLM? She mentioned that those first one to two years in her furniture business was the sweet spot. So why not just scale back your workload to what you were doing at that time? No one is forcing you to take on more and more and more. You have the power to say no and to set your own schedule. You are your own boss after all. In my case, I realized that four videos a week was way too much for me. But that didn't mean that one day I was like, oh, look at that. It's too much work. I guess YouTube can't be my job. Gotta go find something else now. No, I just scaled it back to find a workflow that worked for me because that's something that was fully within my control. So it's interesting that she's kind of attributing this over success in her furniture business as being her breaking point and the reason that she left it all behind to join Monet, to join an MLM instead. And that leads me to believe that maybe we're not getting the full story here. Maybe there were some other factors that led to her decision to leave her furniture business and join an MLM instead. And those might be details that she's conveniently leaving out here. I'm not sure. But again, it's all about making your life before seem as bad as possible so that the MLM business opportunity seems better. So it wouldn't surprise me if people telling their story on these calls sort of cherry pick or over exaggerate certain details to really drive home the point that the MLM and the MLM only is the thing to give them the life of their dreams. This business is built on the journey. Your success and that destination for every single person that you will ever bring into this business is built on the journey. It's built on the walk. So it's like, when you think about it, it's like, oh, wow. The person who really does love walking is going to go so much further and they're going to walk every day, right? They're going to go walking and walking and walking. And then the person who's just training for something, they're going to go do their, you know, whatever they're doing, I forget, marathon, right? So if someone's like training for a marathon, they're going to do the marathon and then, oh, the marathon's over. Okay, that's it. That's what happens to people in this business. They want the marathon. They want the rank. They want the title. They want, you know, and 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 some people just, most people just give up because they're like, oh, I'm dying on lap one. Like this ain't going to happen. Screw the marathon. I'm not going to be able to do that. When we all were dying on lap one, everyone was dying on lap one. And then we got to keep going and we got to keep going and we got to train and train and train and train, right? Her analogy is flawed in the sense that it assumes that everyone starts on an even playing field and that everyone is in control of their own success in the business. Neither of those things are true, therefore her analogy does not apply. To start off, some people are given advantages. There's the advantage of timing. When did you join Monate? Did you join in 2014 before anybody knew what it was? Or did you join in 2022 when there's already 400,000 reps out there? Monate has multiple hair loss lawsuits and there's hundred of anti MLM videos online exposing the company's shady practices. <laughs> it's easy to see how the person who joined in 2014 has an upper hand over the person who joins in 2022. That's not an even playing field there. You weren't all dying on lap one, like she's trying to say. Of course, those people who joined in the early days of the company, those people have likely stuck it out longer because they saw the most success the quickest. Those are the people that make up the top ranks of the company today. They're not in the the company still because they've had the most stamina or the most grit, or they're the ones that are just quote, enjoying the walk. No, those people are in the company the longest because they got to walk on a flat surface while everyone else is climbing Mount Everest. 
So that's one advantage, timing. Another advantage you could have is your network, who you know. Are you a successful furniture builder with celebrity clients living in Los Angeles with a substantial social media following? Or are you an 18 year old recent high school graduate living in a small farm town in middle America with 100 Instagram followers, most of which are your family and friends? One of those kinds of people has an upper hand when it comes to a recruitment based MLM opportunity. One of those people clearly has the larger network consisting of more people who may be open, receptive, and able to invest in that opportunity that you're pitching them. There's several factors that make climbing that MLM pyramid more or less accessible to different people. Not everybody is given that same opportunity to begin with. And on that note, her analogy is also flawed under the assumption that each person is in control of their own success. To an extent, you do have some control, but in the end, it's not up to you. Remember to make money and be successful in these MLM limbs, you have to climb to those upper ranks. The lower ranks make little to nothing. That's not where you want to be. The people at those lower ranks oftentimes are actively losing money. So their goal is to strive to move upward. That's the objective of the MLM game. Get yourself out of the bottom and move to the top. Now, the quickest way to move to the top is to recruit other people into the business opportunity. In fact, in Monate, according to their compensation plan, you can't even rank up one time if you don't recruit. It's not possible for you to go from rank one to rank two without putting someone else below you. Recruitment is essential to move up the ladder. Now here's where we hit that roadblock because you can't force people to sign up. Recruiting people is something that's ultimately out of your control because you're relying on the actions and decisions of other people. If you pitch the opportunity to 100 people and all of them say that they're not interested, you're back at square one. You don't have the power to make them sign up. So now your only choice is to go find 100 new people and pitch to them and hope that this batch of people works out better for you than the last batch of people. The point being that there are a lot of factors to this MLM game that are completely out of your control, kind of like rolling a dice, there's a good amount of luck that goes into being able to recruit people. And with each cold message, with each pitch, you're just rolling that dice and hoping that it works out for you in the end. So I do not agree with this whole analogy that the walkers are the ones that see more success in the business than the marathon runners. It doesn't apply well to the context of MLMs and how they operate. It just doesn't make any sense. So the thing that I really, really want to share with you guys tonight is that journey. Okay. And that journey has got to be shared. If you are not sharing it, if you are not sharing where you are going, if you are not sharing what you want from this business, if you are not sharing what you have achieved in this business, so many people come to me and they're like, well, I'm just not really where I'm at. And, and I just, you know, I don't, I don't feel like it's time for me to share what this business has done because, you know, it really hasn't done that much. I will never forget the day. This was the first time I ever said this. One of my girls came up to me. She was actually on Nicole's team. She came up to me at slide bar and she goes, I don't, I would always have my girls share their checks, share, the, share your check. What'd your check do for you? And it didn't matter. It didn't matter what your check did for you. It could have been one bag of groceries. Do you know how many people are out there that need one bag of groceries that literally want to pay for one tank of gas? I joined this business and I thought that I was just going to make enough money to take my kids to the movies once a month. You guys, every single person can benefit from every single ounce of this business. And even if you haven't even got that yet, even if you have not got the bag of groceries or the tank of gas yet, you have to share that you are going to, okay? Because people go places with people who are going places. And if there's anything that I did right in this business, because I've done a lot of things wrong too. I've made a lot of mistakes. You guys, I've done so many things wrong in every aspect of my life. I've done things wrong in my marriage. I've done things wrong as a mother. I've done things wrong in this business as a leader, as everything we all have, right? But the one thing that I did right from the very beginning was have transparency. I had transparency with not only what this business was doing for me as I went, but what this business was going to do for me. Because believe it or not, you guys, sitting here 
you know, $5 million earner, two-star SED, literally top team in the company, number five income earner. I literally started where you were. There was a time when I didn't have a paycheck to talk about. There was a time when my check was $200, $300. Okay. So I did one thing and that was share my journey. I shared my journey and I shared where I was going. And I wanted to tell everyone what I was going to do in this business. I did it so much that if you know me, you know that I went on and I shared that I was going to get a like murdered out black Cadillac. You guys, I didn't even know it had to be white. And I have the video of it. And I'm literally, I'm like, yeah, this is the Cadillac I'm getting. Hell yeah. This got some black wheels, murdered out windows. Like that's mine. I had no idea. I didn't even know. So what does that tell you? That tells you that I was talking about where I was going before I even knew how to get there. If you follow somebody on social media who is in an MLM, there's a good chance that you've seen these kinds of posts that she's talking about. The talking about what your paycheck did for you or dreaming big and talking about where you're headed. And specifically, it's the sharing how you're spending your paycheck that is so bizarre to me because quite frankly, it's nobody's business how you spend the money that you have earned. And it's odd to me that if you're in an MLM, you're encouraged to engage with that kind of behavior. I have never once considered considered sharing my groceries or my tank of gas or going to the movies to make the point of like, hey, look at what YouTube money has done for me. You know, that money that I make from my job, here's how I'm spending it. It's weird. Nobody cares. But people in MLMs do that because they have something to prove. They feel the need to justify their decision to be in the business opportunity and to prove that they're not getting scammed, to prove, hey, look, here's the money I actually made. It's not a scam. But a Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, they do it to entice other people into the business opportunity. Because remember, this is a recruitment-based scheme. So one of your main job duties is to get other people interested enough that they sign up. And this behavior of sharing your paycheck does fall on a spectrum. It can range from being like, are you struggling to afford groceries? I have the solution for you. All the way to over here where it's like, look at my luxury car, the new house I'm building, the vacations I'm going on, the closet full of designer clothes I have. But no matter where you're at on that spectrum, all of it is deceptive, all of it is predatory, and all of it is kind of claiming that if you join my team, you can have what I have. And I really wanna drive home this point of deception because those people at the bottom who are barely making enough to afford groceries, they don't wanna be there. No, they wanna be at the top making the big bucks. They are busting their butts trying to climb that pyramid, but they're barely making anything right now. That's deceptive. They're struggling, but they're acting like everything is great. They're like, my paychecks are really tiny right now and they barely cover anything, but one day I'll make it to the top. One day I'll have those big paychecks. And on the other end of the spectrum, the people at the top who are actually making millions and boasting about those lavish lifestyles, that's deceptive too. Because what they don't tell you is that less than 1% of people in the company make it to that level and that it's very unlikely that you're actually gonna get there. That lifestyle is very unattainable. So to an extent, people People who are in MLMs have to be at least some level of deceitful on social media as a way to entice people into the business opportunity. You can't give people the full story because if you did, they wouldn't join under you, you couldn't build a team, and you couldn't climb in the ranks. And I feel like kind of what she's saying right here is if you're not at the top yet, fake it till you make it. Share what your paychecks are helping you afford as you go and never let go of that dream that one day you will be at the top. I had no idea. I was so anti-direct sales. I knew nothing about this business model. I knew nothing about really, truly the company. I remember I would never say Ray or Stewart's name for like the first two years in my business because I like couldn't remember which one was which. Like I literally didn't, I would, I couldn't say Erdinetta for the life of me. Like I couldn't tell the story of you guys literally. Okay. So this is what I'm going to share right now. Share where you're going, share what it's done for you. And this is what triggered me to talk about this tonight. So I have a group of women right now um, in my front line that are going for market mentor, okay? And we had a call last night. We started talking about something and I'm talking about, you know, okay, we've got to share more 
for the girls of like the million dollar earners and the people that, you know, to help the people who are going for MMB, right? We've got to help those MMB legs. I want to close out that first. And then I will be able to like, you know, we'll be able to like fill in that volume with making our own flash sales or if a flash sale comes up or, you know, really pushing the product of the month or whatever I said. But right now we really, really, really need to focus on your girls hitting MMB. So this isn't really the point she's getting at. Truthfully, I don't know what point she's getting at. She's jumping all over the place, but there's something that she just said that I really wanna highlight because I think it is very important to understand. She is saying, I have this group of girls on my team who want to get to the rank of market mentor. Then she goes on to say that she was telling these girls, okay, if you wanna to get to market mentor, we need to focus on getting your girls to MMB first. And here is what this means. I'm gonna show you the compensation plan. Market mentor has this bold, box around it. That's because it's kind of like a milestone rank in Monet. This is where people start making a livable income. This is the rank you really want to be at if you want to make Monet your full-time job. This is where you want to be if you're going to qualify for the Cadillac program, which by the way is not a free car program. Please understand that. But MM is a big deal. This is where people really want to be. This is still falling within the top 1% of the company. And what I really want to point out here is how concerning it is that the leader is saying, okay, if you want to rank up and hit your goals, you need to get the girls under you to rank up too, which is 100% true. That is a fact of the compensation plan. And that fact right there is very scary. According to the compensation plan, if you want to hit market mentor, you need at least two people under you to hit MMB. So that makes perfect sense that she's like, okay, well, if you want to get to that rank, you need to get some of your girls to a certain rank too. This is true for most of the ranks in the company. As you can see here, if you want to hit a certain rank, you need to get others under you to pull their weight and hit certain ranks as well. And what I'm hearing here, what I'm taking away is that it's impossible for you to hit your own goals on your own. You can't do it alone. You are quite literally relying on other people to help you achieve what you want. And personally, that sounds terrifying. The equivalent of this example for me would be like me saying, I want to have 100,000 subscribers on YouTube making anti-MLM content. But wait, 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 that goal is not entirely up to me. If I want to hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to need Sally Sue, the girl who I convinced to also start making anti-MLM content on YouTube. She needs to get to 50,000 subscribers first. That's essentially what's happening in Mon8. You can't just set a goal and achieve it on your own. You need to recruit others to also do the same thing you're doing and sort of train them and get them to hit a certain level first. So it's kind of a small detail that she really just glosses over in this call, but I picked up on it. And I think that's really important to point out because this is an essential fact to understanding how MLMs work. Your achievements are not solely up to you. They partially depend on your recruits also performing at a certain level. And without them, you have nothing. And once you understand that, it becomes clear why we have all of these kinds of hoorah, pump up, motivational team calls. Because the person at the top of the pyramid here is trying really hard to train her downline members to do well too. Because she is reliant upon everyone else on her team pulling their own own weight if she wants to maintain at that top rank that she's at. So these kinds of team calls are almost necessary to try and motivate people to remain in the company and to remain working the business. Everyone is so delicately stacked on top of each other and these pyramids can crumble at any time point. Once people wake up and they start quitting, that's what I really wanted to point out here. I said, so here's the thing. I went back, I went back on uh, my team page and I started looking at things. And I was like, wow, like, wow, the challenges to share all of these things, all of these places that all of these people were going, every million dollar earner, you guys. And here's the thing. I'm going to throw this in here right now, because I know that some of you are on here and you think this, but what if I share someone else and that person that I share like, you know, someone who, who follows me is like inspired by and goes and joins them. Guess what? Then they go and join them. They weren't supposed to be with you. They weren't supposed to be on this journey with you. That holds a lot of people back in the beginning. 
They don't want to share their upline. They don't want to share their sideline. They don't want to share the success of someone else because guess what? Then, then their neighbor or their friend or their cousin or someone else or whoever it is, is going to want to, she's going to want to go join with the successful person. So they, they don't do that. And guess what? You're losing out on the opportunity of showing someone what is possible. And you know how many people have followed me for years and then gone and joined one of my girls on my team that I shared or join another girl that I shared in the company. And guess what I do? I congratulate them. And I know that God chose that person for them. That's where they were supposed to be. So you cannot let that hold you back. I see that holding a lot of people back right now. A lot, a lot of new girls coming into this business and they ain't sharing anyone else. No one else. Well, guess what? You are not going to relate to every single person in your audience. You're not going to. And, and, and you know what? Most of the time, you guys, they're going to join you. They're going to say, wow, I watched that video that you posted of Ivy. And oh my gosh, that is so relatable. I'm ready to join. Wow, I just watched that video you posted of Taylor. And that, that was just so me. That's exactly where I'm at in my business or in my life. I'm ready to join you. That's what's going to happen nine times out of 10. So guess what you're doing? You're blocking out those nine times when that one time someone else is going to go join someone else. And if they're going to go join someone else, you need to be happy for them. You need to be happy for them because that's where they are supposed to be. Oh my gosh, Brett, I didn't even know you were on here. <laughs> uh, okay. So anyways, that was one thing that I wanted to throw out there because again, I keep running into this wall where I'm like, why is this girl not sharing anyone? Why is she not sharing any of these success stories? And you know, my team, my girls, my OGs, they know that I was like, you better be sharing every freaking successful person in this company. I don't even think I let them like run that through their head. Like that was not even like a thing. Like that wasn't even something. So you have to make sure that you are sharing all of it because you know what? Maybe it's your best friend's mom who wants to join, but you just keep posting you. And you're not posting Tony Van Schoik, who is way more relatable to your best friend's mom. Okay, so this is kind of interesting because this topic of competition doesn't come up much on these Zoom calls, I feel like. And what I'm taking away from this section of the call is the reminder that there is competition. It is a very real thing. Whether or not people talk about it very often or not, competition exists in these companies. What she's advising you do is that if you are not successful yet, or you are at the bottom still, go out there and share the posts and share the reels and share the content from those who are very successful on your profile so that you can say, hey, I'm not there yet, but look at these people. Look at where they've gotten. It's a way of showing what's possible in the business without actually having achieved it yourself. But she's saying that people are held back by the idea that if they're going to share the more successful people, then their followers, their viewers are just going to go join the more successful people. They're not going to want to join me, the person who's still at the bottom. They're going to want to go and join you who's at the top, which personally I feel like is very valid. And it highlights that there is competition for recruits because the number of people out there in the world to recruit is a finite resource. And everybody in the company is competing for that resource. Recruitment is the lifeblood of the business. You cannot make it to the top if you don't have hundreds of people under you. But not everybody who joins Monate is able to recruit a volume large enough to actually climb in the pyramid and make that decent money. So it's kind of like this rat race, like the pressure is on. You have to be the quickest person to recruit the most people. So naturally there is going to be some competition there and you don't want to lead people to other alternatives of other people that they might want to join under. And especially given how difficult recruitment actually is, I'm sure it feels like a huge blow. If you've been working on this one specific person for an extended period of time, maybe you've been messaging them regularly. Maybe you've been trying to engage with them on social media regularly. You've been convincing them to join. You're
spending a lot of your time and energy trying to convince them. But then at the end of it all, they go and they join under someone else and you get none of the credit. That would suck. I could see how that would be painful, but it definitely does happen. And considering the element of competition is gonna be really important when you're trying to decide whether or not you wanna get involved in an MLM. Recruitment is what you have to do, but it's also the most difficult task. So anyways, we're going to dive into recruiting and what I mean by this. Okay. And here's the thing. The, the reason why I always go back to recruiting is because recruiting saves all businesses. It will literally save your business, no matter where it is at, no matter if it's beginning, no matter if it's ending, no matter if you're drowning, no matter, no matter what it is, recruiting is going to save your business. Girl, we know that. That's the whole issue. But thank you for confirming so clearly that it is all about recruiting. We love to see it. And not just you. You have to be able to know these things and you have to be able to help your girls that you're bringing in with these things. Okay. So what do I mean by like, okay, we're going deep, right? Like we're going deep. We're getting vulnerable. I would say 75% of you are not going to be comfortable doing this and you're not going to put this into action. But the 25% of you who does is going to gain so much from this. Some of you may have to have a conversation with your husband because the husbands, they're the ones with the biggest egos, unfortunately. They want to be the breadwinner. They want to be the one that takes care of. No, we are not admitting that we are broke. We are not admitting that we're behind on our car payment. We are not admitting that we have so much debt that we owe on everything, that we this, that we that. The only way to get out of all that shit is to talk about it. Because guess what? The people who want to come into this business and who are going to work, this is what I'm saying. The one thing that I did right in this business from the beginning was my vulnerability and my transparency. Because what did I do? I had the company freaking knocking at my door, pretty much being like, how do you have all these frontline girls running? How is this happening? It's because of exactly what I'm telling you right now. It's because of the way that I brought them in. Now, don't get me wrong. You're going to have people who join for the discount. You're going to have people who join for, you know, the, the community. You're going to have people who join for the side hustle, all right? That, that's fine. But the people who are going to be in it to win it, those ones, those ones are going to join when you go deep. They want their husband home. They want to have another baby. They're going through in vitro. They're going through a divorce. They just lost someone they love. They just lost their job. They just, you cannot relate to someone going through something like that if you are not sharing what you've been through that's like that, what you're going through that's like that. Translation, you should be oversharing every element of your life on social media to therefore tap into the vulnerabilities of your viewers in hopes of gaining them as a recruit and making money off of them. It's one thing to share vulnerable things online for a sense of community or to try and relate to people over a common experience, but it's another thing to share vulnerable aspects of your life with the ulterior motive that it's going to benefit you financially in the long run, that it's going to have some kind of payoff for you in the end. You can tell the difference between somebody sharing something vulnerable in an authentic way versus somebody in an MLM who's doing it for money. And the clue is that they'll tie in the MLM opportunity while they're oversharing. For example, oh, my kid's in the hospital. It's been a really difficult time. Thank goodness I can work my business from anywhere. Oh, my dog died. I'm feeling really upset. Thank goodness I'm my own boss and I can take a few days off. Oh, my car broke down. It's really expensive. Thanks to the business, I can afford to repair it. It could be literally anything, but they will always find a way to sneak their pitch into it. And that's a dead giveaway as to the intentions behind their post. There's usually a money motive behind every MLM Hun's online actions, and you can find the clues if you know where to look. And personally, when I come across these things on social media, it just gives me the vibe of being very inauthentic, very self-serving, and I typically just move right along. I don't engage with it in any way. You guys, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You will never be able to relate to someone who you want to bring into this business. And I will tell you firsthand, the people who run in this business are the people who come into this business with a why. And how do you give them a why? 
coming into this business, you share yours. You share other people's. There are so many people in this company who have been so transparent with their why and what, what they wanted, what they gained from this business. So many husbands have been brought home, you guys. So many husbands. Maybe that is something that someone has never even thought of because it's never been an option for them. They just thought, you know what? I'm going to have to pray every single day while my husband goes to his job. And that's my life. And that's what it is. Or I'm just literally going to have to work and have my kids in daycare because that's the only option that I have. People do not know what they do not know. And it is your job and it is your responsibility to show them and expose the other side of life that people have the opportunity to take advantage of. I really don't like this idea of showing people their why. Because you can show off all these things like bringing home your husband or staying home with your kids or whatever. But in my eyes, those aren't actual attainable things that most people can get out of this opportunity. If you wanna leave your full-time job to stay home and do Monate, presumably you would wanna have your Monate income replace and exceed the income that you were making at your full-time job. Okay, so then we look at the actual numbers. People in Monate don't make a livable income Income until they hit the rank of market mentor, which is in the top 0.32% of the company. That means that less than 1% of people in Mon8 could make enough to justify leaving their old jobs. That's not very attainable, less than 1%. Same thing goes if you want to bring your husband home and you want him to quit his job. Presumably that would mean that your Mon8 income is covering what he would have made at his job. Again, super unattainable for most people in the company. So this feels really gross to me to be like, you have to show people their why. They don't know what's possible. You have to put these ideas and these fantasies in their head about what their life could look like with Monate. But those fantasies are exactly that. They're fantasies. And they are not going to become a reality for most people. So in other words, she's advising that you go on social media and you show your followers something that the business opportunity can't even really follow through with. You are promising them something that they will never be able to get. In the hopes that you can convince them to join for your benefit. And that, in my opinion, is very sinister. Don't stay in the hallway, okay? Walk through the door. Because here's the other thing that I'm going to tell you guys. If God cannot trust you with the things that you will have to do in the beginning of this business to be successful, he will not trust you with the success. It will not happen. Okay, so what does this look like now, right? Like, what does this look like when, you know, you're getting into this business and, and you're kind of feeling like, okay, well, here's the thing. I remember being that neighbor, you guys, when I was like, there was one person that I told about our finances and I would never talk about anything to anyone. So I remember being in that place, you guys, where it's like, oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. But it's not about you. That's not about you. That's not about being embarrassing because embarrassing is still being in the same place in 10 years when you had this opportunity in your hands. And the person who went and they shared these things is at the top of the company, helping thousands and thousands and thousands of women get to that level, get to that place. So like I said, if you need to sit your husband down and you need to talk to him and you need to say, hey, I need to share the place. And obviously you guys don't have to freaking post your bank account. That's not what I'm saying, okay? You don't have to go that deep. But you do have to expose something that is that is relatable in, in the context of struggle, okay? If you are not sharing a struggle and maybe you don't have that struggle anymore because of money. I see a lot of leaders on here too. You better continue to share that struggle every single day. You share your struggles. You share your struggles. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that you will be reminded of my struggles weekly. Okay. And it, it's really hard for me not to post it in like every single post. Like it is so hard for me because I just cannot, I, I, I can't fathom someone watching me and I don't even care if all of them but one of them hears my message just one of them 
just one person hears what I'm saying, doesn't that roll their eyes at me, doesn't think, oh, she's just trying to get money. She's just trying to make more money. The business must be going under. She's talking about her, you know, this again, blah, 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 like all the things. Okay. I think we're witnessing a bit of a derail right here. She's all over the place. But the main thing I'm taking away from what she's saying is that she's encouraging people to be predatory. She'll never admit that that's what she's doing, but her advice is to constantly air out your dirty laundry and to share your struggles daily in hopes that someone out there will relate to it and they'll join your team. And that is predatory. One of the definitions of predatory is, quote, acting with or possessed by overbearing, greedy, or selfish motives. And that's exactly exactly what's going on here. Your greed for money and for recruits is guiding your actions regarding what kind of content you choose to share on social media. It doesn't get more clear than that. So when you are doing this, when you are sharing these things, I want you to remember that you are speaking to someone. There's someone there. There's someone there that needs to hear that. They need to hear that. Oh my gosh. Taylor Taylor and her husband are able to cut back all their overtime. Like, I didn't even know that was, I, I thought I would have to put my kids in daycare and I would have to go back to a job. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is an option. No, 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 no. I'm not in direct sales. I don't want to do direct sales, but then they watch you and they watch Taylor and they watch her and she keeps posting and she keeps sharing and she's reminding them and she's reminding them and she's reminding them. And then finally one day they break after their husband came home from a horrible overtime shift and they missed their daughter's first ballet and this happened and that, whatever, okay? And they're like, you know what? I'm calling Taylor. I'm not gonna do this anymore. Prey on their vulnerabilities until they break. She said it, not me. You have to be that person. You have to be the person that people are looking for, okay? Because most people, just so you know this, I've asked this question, I don't even know how many times, I feel like a million times. And I'll ask you guys right now, okay? What would you do with $10,000 a month? What would you do with $10,000 a month? Even if you're already making $10,000 a month, go in the comments and say what you would do with $10,000 a month when you started in this business. I bet you that's a hard, that's a hard question to answer. You know why that's a hard question to answer? Because a lot of you don't even believe you can make $10,000 a month. And it's not the belief in the company or the compensation plan. It's the belief in yourself. Simply believing in yourself is not going to bring you $10,000 a month. I'm sorry. You can believe in yourself more than anyone in the world, and that still doesn't change the crappy Monate compensation plan. Monate's compensation plan makes it incredibly difficult for people to make $10,000 a month, and you can't just rely on believing in yourself to be successful in the company because your success is not up to you, as we've already talked about. It's up to those who choose to join and remain on your team and their ability to continue that chain of recruitment. And that's it. But you know what? The beauty of this entire business is that you literally, I mean, you guys, did you see, did you see my hair? Like I was rocking my best year yet with my worst hair in my whole life, like worse than my freaking bleach fried at home, like 16 year old hair. Okay. This feels like a weird tangent that she's going on, but did she just admit to having terrible hair? <laughs> Ma'am, don't you sell the quote, number one premium hair care in the world? That's not a true statement, by the way, that's misinformation and a lie that they perpetuate. But why do you have the worst hair you've ever had if you're supposedly promoting the best hair care products on the market? Is she talking about her hair before she joined Monate? Like I'm confused at the timeline of this. She said she had the worst hair of her life during the best year of her life, which is kind of throwing me off. Like what was the best year of your life? Are you talking about the best year in Mon 8? Presumably you are. You wouldn't claim that the best year of your life happened before Mon 8, right? I'm just confused. I don't know what the timeline is, but that stands out to me that if she's talking about having the worst hair she's ever had five years into selling Mon 8, we've got a problem. <laughs> it does not, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. I was sharing my family. I was sharing the house. I was sharing. And, and regardless of even having those different things, it's never the things. It's never the things, you guys. The things are not what make people want and need this business and have a true 
why it's what you're doing. I don't know about you, but what I just heard was that it's not about selling the products, it's about selling the lifestyle. Maybe I'm misinterpreting that. I very well could be. I'm not tracking what she's saying very well. But what I think I heard is that she was, quote, rocking the best year yet with the worst hair of my whole life because she was choosing to promote things like her kids and her family and her house and the lifestyle that Monate's given her rather than the hair results that she's seen from the products. She's selling the lifestyle piece rather rather than the product piece. Granted, she's very frazzled and all over the place right now. I'm really having a hard time tracking the timeline of this story and the point of this story, but that's what I think she's saying. And that's what I'm taking away from this section. Ivy's husband is home a lot now. He gets to be home with them full time now. Wow, Taylor's husband doesn't have to do overtime. Nicola's husband's home full time and they have investment properties and Airbnbs. Oh my gosh, Nicole bought a a, a freaking vacation house and she had babies and doesn't have to go back to work. Those are the things. If someone joins this business because they want the Gucci purse, they're going to work their ass off to get that Gucci purse. And then they done, they gone. They're gone. You got to go a lot deeper than a freaking Gucci purse. Okay. And that's life. You have to talk about life things retiring parents, helping people, being able to give back, being able to do those things. Those are the things. You guys, I dug into so many people's Instagrams tonight. And guess what I didn't see? I didn't see a lot of going deep. I didn't see the person. I mean, I did, and I'm going to share a few with you guys. But I didn't see a lot of the person who I was like, I'm joining her. I'm doing this. I'm doing this business. Do you know that an emotional connection will literally build rapport and trust a thousand times faster than anything else? If you have something, they don't even have to know you. They don't have to ever see you in their entire life. If they go to your profile and they have an emotional connection with you, they will literally trust you instantly. They will trust you. So I want every single one of you after this call, we're going to, we're, we're going to be doing some things. Okay. Because I want people to go to your profiles. And I want them to want to join you and not because of anything else other than where you're going, because they want to go to. So what, I don't care if you haven't made a dollar in this business. You post a, a reel or a video or something of you and your husband and you say, I am working towards bringing him home more. I am working towards paying our house off. I am working towards paying our car payment. I am working towards, I don't know what just happened with my camera. Super blurry. I am working towards paying for our groceries, building a savings account, putting my kids in private school. All of these things, you guys, you don't have to have it already. I had nothing. I had none of it either. None of it but I shared where I was going, what I was doing, how I was going to get there and how I was going to get there was money. Okay. That's how I was going to get there. And how did I share how it's possible? I shared other people's success stories. Okay. So now we're instructing people to promote a lifestyle that they don't even live, promoting something that the opportunity has not provided you yet, promoting hopes and dreams without any kind of tangible evidence that it will happen for you. That's what's basically happening. Again, this feels deceptive and like you're kind of making false promises. It also seems really difficult to actually recruit this way. Like it would be really challenging to convince people to join your business opportunity if you yourself aren't even seeing any payoff yet. Like come and join my team 
team, you definitely want this opportunity. I haven't made any money yet, but someday I hope to, and maybe you can too. <laughs> it's just such bizarre behavior. It's astounding that people fall for it, but people do fall for it. And I think that really speaks to how skilled MLM reps are at emotional manipulation and preying on people's vulnerabilities and giving people something to believe in. So you start and you share where you're going. And then you show people where they can go to. And you show them through other people. So you're the first person to say it. And then the people that you are sharing, the success stories that you are sharing is going to be that third party validation for people to be like, wow, people really are successful in this business. Damn, people could do that. Wow, you can make that much money in this business. Oh my gosh, you could bring your husband home. You could pay off your debt. You could get a new Cadillac. You could go on a trip. You can, all of those things, you guys, if people do not see that right when they come to your profile, because here's the thing at the end of the day, this is what I want to ask you guys. If you are in this business, your social media is your business. It is not to please people. And I'm not saying go blast a bunch of graphics, okay? But it's not to be the cool girl. It's literally to be the money girl. You're the money girl now. And you could do it in a really, really authentic way where you're still showing up in your cute outfit and you're showing things, but you're talking about the business. If you're trying to grow your social media for something else, that's your ego. And that's not going to take you far in this business. Ew. So once you join Monate, you've now taken on the identity of the Monate girl and nothing else. Hate that. Hate that. But it's so true. I see this playing out all the time. It's like somebody joins an MLM and then overnight it's their whole identity. It's their whole personality. And that's all they can talk about. From that point forward, you are the MLM girl and every move you make on social media is strategic and it's geared towards furthering yourself in the business, which is really sad and strange if you think about it. Because what about the people that are supposedly just joining this as a side hustle for some extra money? They're expected to totally change their social media presence now. I can't think of many part-time jobs or side hustles that would encourage you to take it on as a personality trait. Someone who gets a part-time job at a retail store or a fast food location, they don't just suddenly become the McDonald's girl overnight and now they only post about their job at McDonald's. It's strange behavior outside the context of MLMs, but such a huge part of being in an MLM is creating that facade that you are involved with something that other people should want to be involved with. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, that may make you feel like your social media is not your own anymore. You've kind of handed it over to Monate. You are the Monate girl now. And your social media is expected to reflect that. I hate that so much. So you need to be that person that shows up. And you guys, I literally am, I'm not kidding you. I asked my girls the other night, I said, when people go to your page, do they even know you're in Monate? Because no one's digging. No one's digging the first time they come to your page. Like, they're like, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that highlight? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, you went on vacation? Mm, whatever. Like, they don't, they're, they're not, they don't even know you do money. Money is maybe, maybe they've never even heard of it before. So I want you guys to go to your profile and literally look at that. Look at that and be like, would I want to join me? Is what I'm sharing screaming I have an opportunity for you because if people do not know where they can go, they're not going to go. They're not going to go. How cringy that your social media should scream, I have an opportunity for you. I admit that I'm actually very surprised to see her advising this because I've seen the exact opposite advice be given on other team calls. I've seen other leaders basically instruct that you don't have the company name anywhere on your profile because that'll scare people off. Almost like if people know that you're in an MLM, that's gonna be a deterrent for them actually following you or engaging with your profile. So very fascinating to see here that she's sort of leaning into the fact that you should make it really obvious that you're in an MLM. I don't think that a lot of big leaders would advise that these days actually. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen for a minute. I'm going to show you guys just my story that I posted tonight. And, you know, I mean, honestly, this made me super, super emotional. I know I'm going to cry again because 
I started this out and it wasn't even honestly meant for this. I started it out literally for my girls going for MM. We were trying to do, you know, something that we all do and then our girls do it and whatever. So I, um, I did this post and in the reel, it, I started this out by saying, you know, the real, how many times I have, I'll play it for you. Hold on. Okay. She spends the next two solid minutes trying to share her screen and get the sound to play on the reel. So I'm just going to skip forward until she actually gets it up and running. So I end up posting this, right? 50 this times more, a hundred times more, 200 times more, 500 times. Probably. Okay. So that was a little delayed in the like volume, whatever. Okay, so I posted that talking about how many times people have told me no that actually ended up joining me and becoming super, super successful, okay? I was like the hardest no there was. So in this caption, I said, it's okay to change your mind. I did. I was a hell to the no, no, no. Keep your samples and bless your heart when this business was brought into my life. Five years and over 131 million dollars sold in my team and million dollars in sales teams later. You guys, my team has sold a hunt over $131 million in money products in five years. And I would say majority of that total was in the last three years. Okay. The first two years was obviously growing. Um, this opportunity is a true gift from God, but in order to receive, he must fully see you trust him. Okay, so how much do you trust God that he is going to give you the right people, that he is going to remove the right people? Maybe some people aren't meant to be on this journey and you just keep dragging and dragging and you're like, no, no, no. You guys can only lead a horse to water. I mean, you can lead a horse to water, whatever the quote is. What is it? Like you can lead a horse to water, but it's up to them to drink. Is that even the saying? I don't even know. Something like that. Um, Okay. So in other words, his gifts don't always come packaged in the wrapping paper we envision. This month is insane with the savings you get when you join an additional $216 in product free. DM me. I'm ready. If you're ready to dive in and start building your generational future today. After all, it's shampoo people, the necessary the, nece the necessity of all necessities. It's consumable versatility and product options, AKA something for everyone in the house. We have the number one comp plan in the industry and we are just getting started. Global expansion and product launches are the two things Forbes says to look for when joining a company. I like that she's sharing her screen and showing us what a typical post on her Instagram story looks like, because this is a great, almost cliche example of what a lot of MLM reps post. They make a reel trying to overcome some kind of objection or criticism of the company or business. Then they put a novel of a caption on it, spewing crafty motivational language. They throw in some numbers that can't be shown, can't be proven. For all we know, they're made up numbers. Mention God for good measure and then wrap up the whole thing thing by saying, DM me if you want to get started. There's one main thing that stands out to me from this particular post, and it says she claims that Monet has the quote, number one compensation plan in the industry. That's not a thing. There's no award in the MLM industry for best compensation plan. There's no ranking or rating system. There's literally nobody out there naming Monet as having the best compensation plan other than these Monet girls themselves. This is a blatantly false claim. Claim. And I would argue that it's an easily disproven claim as well. Trust me, I look at a lot of MLM compensation plans and there are plenty of other MLMs out there with more generous compensation plans than Monate has. There's companies with smaller startup costs. There's companies that don't require you to recruit just to make it past the first rank. You will have to recruit later on down the road, the higher you get. But there's some companies that let you advance like the first few ranks without recruitment just based on sales. There's companies that give a much higher commitment Mission rate on their product sales. Like there's lots of things that make the Monate compensation plan less desirable as compared to other companies, which might be why we've seen thousands of people jumping ship from Monate to go to other MLMs because they have better compensation plans. I'm just saying, okay, no one is claiming that Monate has the best comp plan other than the people that are in the company. And this is a small example of how people will just make things up and try and pass them off as factual because there's nobody there to stop them from making false 
false claims and likely people will just read it and blindly believe them about it. But okay, do you get my point? Do you guys get like what sharing those things means? And even if you have not reached those, you guys, if someone was watching my profile, okay, they're on my Instagram and I'm sharing these girls, right? And they see that and they're like, wow, she had a home birth. She was able to pay for her home birth. Okay, I need a message, Krista. It does not mean they're going to go to her profile and be like, okay, Amanda, I want to join you because you had a home birth. Like, that's not what happens, you guys. But do you see what, do you see that? Like, do you see how powerful that is to just truly show, to show that? So here's the thing that I need you guys to do, okay? I need you guys. I need you guys to share where you're going, share what this business has done for you. And you have to do it from your heart. You have to do it from your heart. So maybe this, like I said, is having a conversation with your husband because you have to break through all of those walls of what's holding you back and what's allowing your ego to just sit there and like brew and tell you all the things not to do. Don't do this because so-and-so is going to say this. Don't do that because this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do that. You guys, you have to do this. It is, it's, it's not optional, actually. It's, re- it's a requirement to grow and be successful in this business. If Brittany Rose and Connie Sanchez were not speaking at that winery that night, and I'm not going to lie, Brittany, you know, sharing her paycheck with me had a lot to do with me really running in the business, but telling me like what is possible if they did not tell me what's possible, I would have no idea, but I'm a, I was a visionary with that, with that income. Okay. I did not have my first designer bag until I hit a million dollars in commission. That was never something I wanted. I didn't care about that. I wanted more time with my kids. I obviously, I, I had gained the time to really heal my marriage. Like I had gained the time to bring my husband home. I had literally been able to start looking at our first house. Um, Okay. So I would say that in, in a regular conversation, yeah, you could tell people how much money you make. You cannot be posting that on social media. This is coming from section 3.6.3 of the Mon 8 policies and procedures document titled income claims. And it reads, because Mon 8 market partners do not have the data necessary to comply with the legal requirements for making income claims, a market partner when presenting or discussing the Mon 8 opportunity or compensation plan to a prospective market partner may not make income projections, income claims, or disclose his or her money income, including the showing of their money payment card records, back office records, bank statements, or tax records. This document doesn't say, oh, it's fine to make an income claim to someone individually in private, just not on social media. No, this says if you join Monet, you're not allowed to tell people how much you make because that would constitute an income claim. And we can't be claiming that this opportunity provides you any amount of money at all because we guarantee you nothing. So it's interesting that she's saying right here, you can tell people how much you make, just don't post about it publicly. And that she also references being highly motivated by hearing how much another Monate rep made on their paycheck. No matter what way you slice and dice it, it all falls under the category of income claims and that's not allowed. Another part of the income claim section, one of my personal favorites of the entire Monet policies and procedures document, it says, in their enthusiasm to enroll prospective market partners, some market partners are occasionally tempted to income claims or earnings representations to demonstrate the inherent power of direct selling. This is counterproductive because new market partners may become disappointed very quickly if their results are not as extensive or rapid as the results that others have achieved. This is basically saying if you're trying to recruit somebody, don't try to entice them by telling them how much you've made because when they join and they inevitably discover that it's really hard to make money in this company, they're going to become disappointed and they're going to want to quit. We don't want to get anyone's hopes up here, okay? So just don't talk about your paychecks. Income claims are not allowed, period. So her saying that you can share your paychecks in a private setting actually goes against company policy. But I I really, really want you guys to understand and know that you have, you have to, you literally have to do this. This is not something that you can grow success without doing. You have to do this. And I promise you, this will take you further than any product knowledge, 
social media following, being a hairstylist, having all the network doing, sorry, I got to plug my, um, my computer in, it's about to die. And you, this emotional connection that you will have with people will literally, it'll be everything. You can find out what product's going to be best for them. You could find out whatever. Okay. All of that. Now I want to dive into another really big thing. I'm almost done. This is like the very end of it. And I, I'm just, I'm ready for all of you guys to get off this call and just go to town, make a reel super simple. If you scroll through reels, you guys, and you see one, it's like a bunch of pictures or a bunch of videos. And it's, it says on there and it says, um, oh my gosh, what is it? What's the thing that it says? You guys, it says like on the top and it's like, hold on. My brain is not working right now. Um, I want to show you guys this because this is like super, super helpful for me. Oh, the, the template. Okay. So yes, sorry. I should have just looked at the chat. That would have been a lot easier. So I want to show you guys this. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you this. Okay. Well, that's annoying. Okay. Anyways, it's going to say, just scroll through reels, right? Until you see use template. You can click on that use template and then just throw in some pictures, throw in some pictures of yourself, your family, your dogs, if you're a dog mom and talking about, you know, whatever you want to do, your kids, if you're a mom, your parents, your husband, what you guys want to do. Maybe it's something you dream of doing, buying a house. What I would love to see is like dream board reels. You guys show people that they have an option to be able to go for something that would help them buy their first home. They would help them buy a boat, do something. And, and okay, there's two more things, two more pieces of advice that I want to give you. One of them is still like kind of on this deep topic. Um, and that's with your husband. He has to know this is for him too. It's about all of you, why you're doing this. Okay. Because you're going to have to sacrifice some time. You're going to have to sacrifice watching the movie at night. You're going to have to sacrifice some family dinner. Sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice. I mean, it, these things are going to happen. Okay. You're going to have to do that. It's inevitable to grow your business and be really, really successful. Exactly. Taylor, daddy did bath tonight. Okay. So earlier you were claiming that joining the business is going to give you time freedom. And a huge reason why you joined in the first place was so you would have the time to repair your marriage and to have more time with your family. Now you're telling us that if you join Monica, Hey, you're going to have to make some sacrifices and you're going to have to get your family on board with the fact that you're not going to be around as much because you're going to be busy working the biz. So which is it? It's crazy how they just switch the narrative and they'll play both sides of the coin depending on the point they're trying to make at that exact moment. Because in this one team call, she has said both that joining this business is going to give you extra time with your family and that joining this business is gonna take you away from your family a little bit because you're gonna to have to work so hard. It's insane. You're on this call, you're here with the team, you're doing the things. So you're gonna to have to do that. Your husband has to know what is going to come from that. So I will never forget the day that I built a dream board with my husband, we were on our way camping and I literally put a boat on there. I put debt, like pay off our debt, a little pile of money for paying off our debt. I put a for sale sign for buying our first home or sold. I think I did a sold sign. I did um, a pool because we wanted to buy a house with a pool. I did all of this, all of this, you guys, with my husband. And he knew what we were doing this for. And some of you, that's amazing. If you have a super, super supportive husband, that is incredible. Like, but what holds a lot of people back in this business is not having a supportive husband and them not being on the same page with the vision or understanding what this is actually for. Because at the end of the day, you guys, if you're going to be really successful, you're, you're going to have to go deep. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's like the, the thing that I want to share with you guys on that. And then now I don't even remember the other thing that I wanted to share with you. I think it was, okay, the, that tip. And then, oh my gosh, I don't even remember. Okay. I think it's just time for everyone to get to work. Okay. 
Um, I loved doing this with you guys tonight. This was seriously like one of my, this is my favorite thing to talk about because I know that this is something that will literally make or break the success that you will have in your business and honestly in your life. So I hope that you guys took a lot away. I hope you're ready to go. Just honestly do some self-reflection and look at what are people feeling when they come to your page? What are they feeling? How are they feeling? Are they feeling inspired? Are they feeling motivated? Are they feeling excited? Are they, are you opening their eyes to something that maybe they they'd never seen or even knew was possible before? So, okay. I hope you guys have a good night. Everyone get to work, go use a template from a reel, put together something. Nothing has to be perfect. Messy action is better than no action. If you put something out there and it's sloppy, who gives a shit? It's something. It's better than nothing. Okay. All right. Good night, guys. My grand takeaway from this entire Zoom call is do not believe anything you see on social media, especially if it is coming from somebody in an MLM company who has a strong financial motive to entice people with their lifestyle. That's what I've learned here is that people in these companies are taught very specifically and very strategically about how to present themselves on social media and that it is a facade. It has to be a facade, honestly. Remember that 99.7% of people in Monate do not make a full-time income. Nearly all of the people in this company are not making quote unquote life-changing income from it. They're not making enough to justify quitting their jobs. They are not making enough to justify bringing their partner home. They're not making enough for that new house, that new boat, that new luxury car, or that closet full of designer clothes. But they can't say that publicly. They can't admit that. They can't be upfront and honest about that. Because if they were, it would expose the company for what it really is, which is a money-making scheme. If we saw over 99% of people in Monate being honest that they're in debt from this opportunity or that their paycheck was $10 or that they're really struggling to make and maintain ranks, nobody would join, which obviously would be really detrimental to their business. And then they really wouldn't have a shot at making it in the higher ranks because they'd be shooting themselves in the foot. They wouldn't have anyone interested in joining their downline. So what ends up happening is everyone here is stretching the truth. Everyone is faking it till they make it in some capacity. Everyone is lying about how the opportunity is going for them because they have to if they want people to show interest and sign up. And that, my friends, is all I have for you for this video. I really urge you not to believe everything you see on social media. Please take it with a grain of salt and please understand that there likely is some level of fabrication to it when it's coming from somebody in an MLM. I would love to know your thoughts on this Zoom call down below. Additionally, if you ever have access to Zoom calls, I'm always open to them. Sending me a recording of the call is the best way for me to actually have access to it because a lot of the time these calls are happening at weird hours that I'm not available to go and record them on my own. So if you have any Zoom calls you want me to consider for a future video, please go ahead and send them my way. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.